Hi, my name's Ben Howard and welcome to this series of videos, three in total, where I'm going to teach you how you can add help onto your Power BI reports. Now in this first video, what we're going to do is show you the end result, a previously prepared a demo if you like, and then we're going to move on to part one. And part one is really about showing you how you can begin to utilize bookmarks to place the first big help button on your screen. Now in parts two and three, we're going to delve into how we can add help onto individual visuals and we've got two techniques the first is just by popping a new visual onto the existing canvas and the second is to use a bookmark to navigate to a new page on the canvas so without any further ado let's crack on with part one and have a look at the pre-built demo okay here's the report published on app.powerbi.com now this is a standard report with the exception in this case that I've added this help button here. And this is what we're going to do. So as you can see, when I hover over the help button, firstly, I get a little toaster that pops up a tooltip which just says turn help on. So let's go and click on there. When I click on there, you can see that each of the other main visuals also then has the same help button appear in the top right of the visual. Now it's important that this is the same, of course, because it provides consistency. It shows me very easily and very visually, of course, where help is available and where it's not available. So for example, it's not available on the Acme logo. That has no help available. Let's have a look at what happens if I press the help button again. Well, of course, help disappears, the help logo disappears from the other visuals. Let's press it one more time. You'll also see when I press it that actually that help logo is slightly greyed out and it's no longer shadowed. That gives the impression that the help button has been depressed or selected. So again, a visual cue. Now, what else can we do? Well, let's go and have a look at the help here on sales by country. So again, I can mouse over the specific help button for that visual and that pops up again another tooltip and that tooltip might just be sufficient to give me the help. However, I can also display more help if we click on the help button itself. So let's do that. Here the help button's being clicked on. Again, the actual help button's being greyed out and in this case, I open up a whole another visual uh, this is just a text visual with some dummy text in there. But again, it's there to explain exactly what the sales by country visual may be displaying for me. And of course, we can click on that again and we remove the visual. Let's click on again and the visual, the help visual is displayed for us. Using this sort of technique, we can provide lots of interactivity. I can just see the original depressed help button here. We could click on that and remove that. Let's click it one more time and let's have a look at the sales and profit by year, quarter and month. Again, let's hover over the button and you can see a tool tip exposed for me there. If we click on this particular help button, then you'll see what happens is that we're taken to a completely separate page. So we remove all of the other visualizations, all of the other distractions from the page we put on a separate help page specifically for this visual. The visual stays in exactly the same place and that's important. And we've now got a whole page that we could utilize to describe some information or give some information from this help. A couple of ways of getting back from this page. I've put the icon here, which takes us back. And again, we could put a tooltip there, but typically I may also just put the help button there. And again, that may take us back to our previous page. In this case, I'm going to click here to go back and we're placed back on our main page again. And if I want to get rid of the help, we can then just go and turn the help off. So there's an overview of the solution that we're going to build in the next three parts of this course, this being part one. Now, what we'll do in part one is really just concentrate on this main help visual and that's what we're going to get on the screen.
Okay, here we are in Power BI, and you can see that I've got an area here where I'm going to add in the help button or help buttons. Let's go and do that. From the insert tab, we'll just click on image. And we're going to need two images. The first image will be the help button for when the help is not depressed. And the second is the help button for when the help button has been selected. That's the image on the left hand side here. Let's just go and insert the main help button into the report. I'm just going to change the width and the height of this a little bit so that it fits into our area. So from memory, the width should be 124 and the height, I think, 126. And then the position, actually, I can make 899. OK, so that just nicely fits that button in that area. One of the things that I've done visually on this page is that I've used the shadow feature of all of the visualizations. So let me turn that on. The shadow feature kind of gives it a 3D view or 3D look and feel. And of course, that works very well for buttons which have been depressed or not depressed. So with the visualization of a button selected, I'm just going to select the shadow feature here. Great, that works quite well. Let's go and add in the other button as well then. Here's my depressed button. And again, we'll go and change the width, height and other features of that. So from memory, the width was 124, the height was 126 and the position was 899. Oh, the Y position, of course, was zero. OK, so that pretty much displays the pressed help button above the other help button. However, it's not quite the same size. And the issue that we have is the white around the, the blue, if you like here. It doesn't spread to the whole width of the, the actual square there. So one of the things that we have to do is in the background we can turn the background on and we just select and it's auto selected as you've seen there a white background so that really begins to fill out that rectangle now we've still got a shadow behind it let's just have a think about why that would be because the shadow isn't turned on that shadow is actually from the button that's behind as in our original help button okay so what we've done now is we've added both help buttons onto the screen or onto the report. What we need to do now is set up some bookmarks to say when these buttons appear or not. So from the view button or from the view tab, let's select the bookmarks button. We can just minimize the format image and the fields well here to give us a bit more visibility. The other button we need to add in or, or field that we need to see is for selection. OK, so here are our two images. They're called image and image, so not particularly useful. Uh, let's just select the first one. I can see having selected that, that's actually the main help button when it's pressed. So if I double click on here, we can rename this image. So I'll call this main help pressed button. OK, and if you've not used the selection pane, it allows you to show or hide specific visuals or images. So I'm just going to hide this button here. You can see that disappears. This image then is called this one. I'm going to rename it from image and we'll just call this main help button. Don't need to know whether it's pressed or not. OK, so. What we've got on the screen at the moment, we could actually save as a bookmark. So I'm going to add a bookmark in using this particular field here called add. And at the moment it's called bookmark one, but I'm going to change the name again by double clicking on it. And I'm going to say no help selected. OK, now if we were to unhide the other image, our press button and hide the main help one. Notice how when I hide or unhide that, the shadow 
appears or disappears. So we definitely want no shadow. So we want it to be hidden. Let's add in now another bookmark. So this bookmark representing this screen is going to be called main help selected. OK, so I've now got two bookmarks and we can click on the view button here to view those bookmarks. You can see down at the bottom it shows us the bookmark that's selected and I could even navigate through here. So at the moment we've got no help selected. If I choose the bookmark called main help selected, you can see that the interface changes as though we've, we've clicked on that button. So that's all well and good. What we now need to do is wire up an action to these buttons. What happens when I click on this help button? So let's go and do that. On the visualizations well, or within the visualizations well, if I select this uh, main help button, then one of the options we've got is an action. And we can turn this action on. The action is the clickable action, if you like. And then I've given several actions that I can perform when I click on this button. The option we want to choose is to navigate to a bookmark. So it's the bookmark action. So we'll select bookmark. And then when we click and invoke the bookmark, we've got the option of choosing which bookmark we'd like to go to. So I want to choose the one which says main help selected. Notice here I've also got a tooltip. This is a tooltip for the button or the action. So I'm just going to type in here, click for help, and that's all well and good. OK, let's go and have a look at our no help selected bookmark now. So let's just view that. So with no help selected, if I mouse over here, firstly I get that little tooltip, click for help, and then if I actually click on there, then I'm directed to the uh, main help selected bookmark. What happens if I click on this button? Nothing yet, because we haven't wired up that button to do anything. So let's go and do that. So this is our pressed button, if you like. We can choose the same sort of action. The action is going to be a bookmark action. The bookmark we're going to navigate to is no help selected. And I don't really need to put a tooltip on here. It's fairly obvious what will happen. Now that we've wired that up, let's just go and have a look at what happens if we click on no help selected. We go to the uh, this bookmark, and if we click here, we go back. OK, so that helps us wire up the bookmarks and helps us navigate around the page. I've got one other thing that I want to do to finish off this particular part of this video, and that's add in all the other little help icons onto the other visualizations. Let's just do that quickly. So I'll insert again an image. In this case, I only need this image. We'll just minimize that. It doesn't really matter how small I make this. I don't necessarily need to be able to read the text because the image is the same as the previous image. And therefore, our brains will wire this up and understand visually that these images are the same and that the function that they provide is the same. So let me quickly add those onto each of the visuals that we want to provide some help to or help on for our user. A couple of things we might just want to do, we might just want to turn a white border onto some of our help buttons so that they're easily distinguishable. We can do that from the visualizations pane. And the next thing we need to do is we need to identify all of these buttons being visible with the relevant bookmarks. Let's quickly do that. So if we exit out of here and then we view the selection pane, we can see the images are listed. One image per help icon. Obviously, I would rename these going forward now. In the bookmark, which is called No Help Selected, I don't want to see these images. And so let's go and hide them and then update that bookmark. So it's simply a question of going through each image and clicking 
on the icon so that they disappear. And then we can go and update the specific bookmark. The specific bookmark we want to update is this one called No Help Selected. So I'll right click on the three ellipses and then just click Update. Now, let's just go and see that that works. So if we click on the View button, then when we're viewing this bookmark, let's just close the selection pane, we can see that none of the help buttons are visible at the moment. And if we select the main help bookmark, we can see that they all appear. So there you have it. That's part one wrapped up. Please do use the button that's on the video now to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you for part two, if not before. Thank you.